Madden NFL 24. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Denver Broncos and the Houston Texans. All that and more coming up next. On a wonderful fall afternoon in the state of Texas, the roof is open and we've got football from NRG Stadium in Houston. Today we've got a fun little clash in the AFC as it'll be the Denver Broncos taking on the Houston Texans. Brandon Gordon joined as always by Charles Davis. Uh, CD, it's been a tough few years here in Houston. Four, four, and three. Those are their win totals the last three seasons. But in is D'Amico Ryan's as head coach. What do you think he brings to the table? And it's interesting you brought up the number three because D'Amico Ryan's is the third head coach in three seasons for this team. What he brings to the table, toughness, organization, and hope. He wanted to be the head coach of the Houston Texans, the team he played for. Meanwhile, for the visiting Broncos, they're hoping to get this offense on track in year two under Russell Wilson. Charles, I wouldn't have believed this. They were the lowest scoring offense in the league last year, just 16.9 points per game. And that means you have to change things up, and they certainly have. You talk about operating under new management. This team certainly is. I expect this offensive production to really rise. And Russell Wilson, I think we'll see much more of the Russell Wilson we've seen in the past. And we are underway from NRG Stadium in Houston. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. So here are the Texans now with a fresh face at quarterback. The second overall pick from Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. In only two seasons, Stroud showed all he needed to at Ohio State. All-American, Heisman finalist, program records galore. He looked every bit like the number one overall pick. He went number two, but Houston is thrilled to have him. A man coming off a great rookie year. It's Damian Pierce, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. And Stroud now to throw. A uh, short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And that's good for a gain of six, and it makes it third down and two yards to go. So, Charles, you know, take nothing away from this young man under center because I know people think he's got a very bright future in this league, but I have to figure the defensive coordinators love the thought of squaring off against a rookie quarterback. And especially if they have guys they can put together a game plan with that's going to confuse, disguise a lot of coverage, make this kid think a little bit. Because in college, he's seen a lot of things. Let's, let's not get it wrong here. But at the same time, in the NFL, you can do so much more because of the athletes you have, because of their football IQ. And don't forget, you're going to throw a couple extra rushers at him as well. See if he can handle the pressure when those guys come at him. First and ten, it's Pierce. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Now a second and six. And they'll go right back to Pierce. And he'll be brought down looks like right at the 40. That one, a first down pickup of eight. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. 
He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Now to change things up, Stroud will throw it. That's into the hands of Woods. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 28. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. We got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice, sustained series to begin the game, and it will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And he'll be taken down just shy of the red zone at the 21. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. So play number 10 now coming. It's been a long opening drive, but this is third down. Stroud looking to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And brought down, but not before they get inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That's a big conversion there on third down, and this has been a great opening drive. You know, at this point, they'd hate to settle for three, but they've created a fresh set of downs and a first and goal. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. Stroud to throw it. This will be caught at about the five. Three yards is the gain that time, second and goal. takes this from the four down to the two. They get three yards closer, but still work to do. It's third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Miko Collins, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Texans are on the board first here this afternoon. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw... And now, of course, all scoring plays are reviewed, and I think they're going to take an extra long look at this one. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Matt Amendola now for the extra point. And the Texans take a 7-0 lead. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it was Nico Collins who finished it off with a touchdown reception.
Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. Well, the Broncos offense gets set to go to work, and at the helm in his second season wearing orange and blue, Russell Wilson. And similar to his nickname, Russell Wilson has a dangerous mix of skills, the ability to throw from the pocket and extend plays and throw on the run. Not to mention an absolute winner. Usually has his team in the playoffs competing for Super Bowl opportunities. Wilson and the Broncos now with a first and 10 at their own 23. Throwing to start the drive. Wilson, a short one of the tight end Troutman. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that will bring up second down. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. On second down, here's Wilson. That's to the rookie, Marvin Mims. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for 13 at a Denver first down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try to get us ahead and try to keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. Now Wilson on second down. This one complete to Jerry Judy. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Again, Wilson. Man open. He's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And Williams is going to pick up a Broncos first down as he'll get this down to the 36. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I think that's how this defense is going to need to play these tight ends. Again, get right up on them and stay physical. And that paid off on that play, helping force that incompletion. Now a second and ten. Play action. Now Wilson. Completes the pass to Judy on the crossing pattern. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 16. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Well, this is an awfully tough route to defend in man coverage because he lines up on the right and then runs a crossing route back to the other side of the field. So as a defender, you're not only trailing him the whole way, you're also looking out for your own guys to make sure you don't get yourself picked off. And then you can't catch up in time to prevent the completion. From the red zone now, here's Wilson on first down. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Russell Wilson, a 16-yard touchdown run. And the Broncos respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. And that's a sight we feel like we've seen a lot over his career. But remember for Russell Wilson, three in his first year as a Bronco last year and only 15 in the last eight years. 
but he still knows how to use those wheels when necessary, and he takes care of business right there. Lutz with the extra point, and we are tied at seven. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was Russell Wilson finishing things off with a touchdown run. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Stroud working out of the gun. Now throw right side here, going to be incomplete. I tell you what, that's a veteran play from a guy in his first season in the NFL. A lot of rookies are trying to force something there. He thought better of it, and that was the right decision. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Throwing now is Stroud. And he takes a shot on the release, as this will be incomplete. And that is how you respond after taking one on the chin to begin this game. Give up a first drive touchdown, go back out on defense, and completely shut them down to force a three and out. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. Back deep for Denver, the rookie Marvin Mims. Take it at the 37. A nice return there of 11 to help mitigate a good punt. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Now a first down throw complete downfield. A huge play there for Denver. 48 yards. Oftentimes now offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air. Nice chunk of yardage there. And then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. the play fake. Here's Wilson. Flushed out right. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Russell Wilson with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Broncos have taken the lead. What an effort there. Sometimes you hold your breath a bit when you see your quarterback diving for the end zone. You don't want him to land on a shoulder roll or take a big shot but he looks none the worse for wear here, and that winds up a touchdown. Lutz good on the extra point, and that makes the score 14 to seven. One play, two plays, touchdown. That's all it took there, a very short and sweet drive that got him in the end zone.
After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Houston set to take over. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. They'll start on the ground with Pierce. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Here's Stroud. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Pierce. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. So five yards here, five on the play. And now it's third and four. Now Stroud. A quick throw there is incomplete. I'll tell you what, these last couple of drives, much better from a defensive perspective. They gave up a touchdown on the opening drive, and then after forcing a punt on their last possession, it looks like they're going to have the football back again. On fourth down, out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. Pulled in at the 24. They'll get nine yards on the return there following a punt of 42. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. And coming out now, the Broncos. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. So first and 10 here for Wilson and the Broncos. At about the 32. Throwing to start the drive. Wilson. Throw left side complete. That's Williams. Not able to go anywhere that time. Second down. That's a nice job defensively to make sure everyone was accounted for because ordinarily you pick up the guys downfield and sometimes you forget about the running back. In this case, they did not and dropped him for no gain. On second down, Wilson. A short one to the tight end, Troutman. Umpire through the flag usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. From the shotgun, Wilson. And this is incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gain from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. There's Wilson to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A real letdown defensively. That was third and a bundle, but they allow the conversion. How about this first quarter for them throwing the football? This defense has zero answers for what they've seen so far with the ball in the air. I'm not sure how they're going to change things around, but offensively, I keep attacking. I keep throwing the football until they make me change. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. Well, it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. 
They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. How about the first quarter he's putting together out wide? Pretty impressive. I think that he likes it, the fact that we're playing this as a day game. You know, some guys, they respond better in the evenings for some reason it builds up. For this guy, day game, and he is off and running. You're exactly right. 100 might be conservative with the start that he's had here in the first he, quarter. Yeah, by the numbers, he's on pace for 200-plus right now. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Wilson will throw again. Finding Williams once more, complete. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. But it certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. It must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Now it's Wilson. This is caught. Touchdown, Broncos. Jerry Judy. A 20-yard touchdown. And the Broncos have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Boy, still in the first quarter, and look out. I mean, they are on pace for over 80 points in this game. I don't know that they'll get there, CD, but this has been impressive to watch so far. That certainly would be history in the making, wouldn't it, partner? I'm glad we're here to actually watch and see if it actually happens, although, like you, I have my doubts, but they are firmly in control of this game. Lutz with the extra point, and it's now 21-7. to That time, a nine-play drive, and it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This fielded right at the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Houston's offense taking over again. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. the ground it's Pierce to begin the drive and just shutting him off there and they finally get him down but not before he reaches the 34 56 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. Ready for the second quarter from Houston. It's the Texans in possession of the football. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. As they've got it as we resume action. He'll get the hook up there to Woods. The excellent play last time is followed by a much more routine gain of three. Ball on the 30 now. Here's a second and seven. Back. 
Back to throw. Here's Stroud. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. And Stroud now to throw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Now the Texans are going to call on the field goal unit. It'll be a 47-yard attempt from the left hash. And this one is right through. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So the three points there in CD, that helps them inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. Is the Texans kick team as they'll send this one away from his end zone Marvin Mims get a look at Jerry Judy as he leads his offense back out there for this next series he's doing what he's capable of having a solid game not not the most amazing game he's not over 100 yards but a good game so far and you just know that mentally he feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in this zone here and call it a day because otherwise, he can really decimate them. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. Escaping the pressure right. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. No shortage of impressive moments from him thus far. Now he's halfway to the century mark, and we're still in the first half. There's been no answer for his running ability so far by the defense. I can't wait to see what adjustments they'll have to make during the halftime break. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Play action. It's Wilson. Right side, it's Manhurts, the tight end. So the completion good for just three, and it'll be second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. And they'll come up second and seven. They'll run out of the gun here, Williams. On a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 41. Again, it's Williams. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Now it's Wilson. A short one to the tight end, Troutman. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Well, they'll fake the jet sweep, and now off play action, it's Wilson. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. Jonathan Greenard running in to pick up the sack. And this is a quarterback who's already had success on the ground in this first half, but this time they're able to hem him in. 
And it's always different when you rush a mobile quarterback as opposed to a guy you know will be right back in the pocket. In this case, you got to make sure the inside pressure and the outside pressure match, and maybe even a second wave to make sure if he squirts free, you've got someone to tackle him. It's a six-yard pickup to get him back to the original line of scrimmage with third down coming up. He had to fight for every yard on that run. Shook himself free of a tackle and kept fighting, even with the rest of the defense closing in on him. That's the kind of effort you'll take every single time. On third down, Wilson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 12-yard line. But well, things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Now Williams running left. And a pickup of about four down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Facing a second and six from the 8. Wilson. his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. He'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Kudos for the defense from me on that one because they were prepared the whole way for him to try to escape and hit them for more yardage running it. I like the way they stayed zeroed in on him and kept him contained when he pulled the ball down. I think he was fortunate to get what he did on that run. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And so much success running the ball on this drive. You get down there, you're knocking on the door, you go to throw it in disaster. Sometimes you outguess yourself because I think a lot of times they expect so much pressure from the defense in that situation that you want to throw the football and instead... <laughs> Cause a fumble. Cause a fumble. You look back at the drive in its entirety and you think running the ball might have been the way to go. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And they'll get him down up past the 15. 70 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. I guess it's good we can't really read the mind of the defensive coordinator now, huh? Had him pinned back there deep, give up that run. Can't be happy. Yeah, whatever was whatever's in his mind right now, we probably couldn't say over the air. First and ten, it's Stroud. Throwing the out route, incomplete. It's Collins. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. Well, this hasn't really been a first half to remember on either side of the ball. But I think this kind of makes this an important drive. You'd love to get this back to a one-score game if you can. And that's good work there to get some yardage here and pick up the first down. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Stroud to throw it. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Schultz. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. 
That's some good hard running there as he'll push his way forward for about five. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Second and five. Stroud will run the option left. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. 14 yards that time and a first down on the keeper. Well, I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because, really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could Touchdown, Houston. Robert Woods, 33 yards. And the Texans have cut it back within a score. Great corner out there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. And he's got it to make this a 21-17 game. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends with a Robert Woods touchdown reception. The lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. Fielded just outside the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Now Cortland Sutton and the rest of the offense getting ready for their next drive. He's been really good in the yardage category, yet to hit the end zone, however. A minor blemish against him right now because the work he's doing catching the ball in some ways, he's helping serve as good ball control because the big plays that he's making have really helped out his team. Absolutely. They're winning on the scoreboard here in quarter number two. Wilson and the Broncos now with a first and ten right at the 30. Here's Williams to start the drive. And he's got a good gain of seven up to the 37. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal... Get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Williams going to get it again on second down. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to throw from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. This offense so far on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. I apologize in advance, Parker, but the B feeders on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Well, we got beef eaters licking their chops and tasty dish in one fell swoop. I did apologize in advance, didn't I? Yeah, you did. That line's not eating tofu, I'll tell you that much for free. A 39-yard punt, a return of five, and the Texans will take over. 
Robert Woods and the Texans back out there. He's been good so far to this point in the second quarter. Need to get him even more involved, maybe? I would agree with that. Definitely. Uh, yeah, it's not even a question for me. The way he's playing, he's doing a nice job. Increase things. More touches, more opportunities. Maybe that can reverse things on the scoreboard for them. They'll try to ratchet things up then maybe here in the second quarter. And they'll begin by running the option. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Oh, man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. On second down, here's Pierce. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. And that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. A yard all they need, but it's third down. Pierce will try to pick it up. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Well, someone's been having a good game so far. And you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. In any event, it happened pretty quickly. I'm not sure he made the right decision on that one. I think if he had to do over again, he would have found a different target downfield. But he made his decision, and that one's incomplete. Here's second and 10. A run for Pierce out of the gun. And space tough to come by there as he'll get maybe a yard to the 37. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Third and nine here. Stroud. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds him for the first down. Stroud now on first and 10. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Second and 10. Stroud looking to throw. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Again, it's Drown. And this is going to be incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Set to punt, here's Cameron Johnston. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The offense getting set again. We spotlight Javante Williams, the running back. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals.
Play action. Now Wilson. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete. But the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. Well, obviously, they never want to see penalties on that defense. But this one, a little bit more significant there on the downfield pass play. And coaches preach it all the time. You can't put yourself in that kind of position if you're the defender. You've got to stay in a spot far downfield where you can play the ball without creating extra contact. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Here's Wilson. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. Any questions of how they'd approach this drive were answered right there. They come out throwing, and they get a nice pickup here toward the end of the first half. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. And that is incomplete here. I like the call. It looked like the right time to dial up a running back screen. But this one got disrupted right from the start and ends up falling incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Throwing is Wilson. He'll drop this down to Williams. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. To throw again is Wilson. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Wilson. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. Russell Wilson with two first half touchdown passes. And the Broncos will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you? Looks like their memory was a little too long there. Lutz good on the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it ends with a Denver touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. Taken at the goal line. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. And the Texans going to get the football one final time here in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. A little over 20 seconds remaining in the half as they'll line up here first and 10. Throwing now is Stroud. Swings this one out wide for Pierce. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. Come on, 
Second down and a little more than a yard here. Now Stroud. Open man is Noah Brown. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. Here's Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. Second and seven. Stroud will look to throw once more. That's to the sideline and incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there was no way that ball was going to be caught. Final play of the half, Stroud taking a shot for Dell here. And it's knocked away and incomplete. So we come upon halftime with the visiting Broncos taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports halftime report. We saw a couple of high-octane offenses getting it done in the first half. Both teams had no problems moving the football. And you'd have to think, the team whose defense shows up in the second half is going to be the one who walks out of here with a victory. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. Broncos with a lead, and they will be receiving this kickoff here as quarter three is underway. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll wind up getting a couple extra yards here for his trouble to bringing it out of the end zone as he's down at the 27. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. But I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation and pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. Meanwhile, Wilson's throw here caught by Mims. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 73 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. They went with the nickel look defensively, so they had five defensive backs in there. Didn't help them stop the run. Yeah, I love that. The nickel look, five cents, five DBs. But what also happens then, you take a big body off the field in order to insert that guy. So you're taking a big off for a little, 
And oftentimes you can run the football effectively against that defense. Wilson's throw here into the hands of the receiver, Judy. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Hartney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep and curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot <laughs> cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. And let's see who's faster. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. I had to do a double take on that one, Brandon, because so far in this game, we haven't seen many of his passes fall incomplete. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Here's Wilson. That is caught, and he will have the Broncos first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. On second down, Williams. And he's able to get this inside the 10 now to the nine. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. Wilson now to throw on third down. Throw left side complete to Troutman. And he'll get nothing out of that one. So he stopped for no gain. And that'll bring up fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. Here we go with Williams. Fighting through. And he's brought down, but not before picking up the first with a very effective stiff arm. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. There wasn't even thought of a short field goal. There was no hesitation. They were going for it. I think he was thinking ahead a couple plays ago that if he got in this situation, they were definitely going for it. And you're right. It was a confident call and a decisive run to pick it up. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. It'll be a gain of five there as they move closer. It's second and goal. That's a great run right there on first down. Didn't quite get into the end zone, but now you've set yourself up for at least two, maybe three more shots from close range. Second and goal from the one. Williams will take it in. Touchdown, Denver. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Alonzo looked to add the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it was capped off by a Javante Williams touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Here's the Texans offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half.
They'll start this drive out on the ground. Up past the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. If these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they're going to have to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Pierce gets this one running right. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 102 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And some strong running there as he's down just shy of the 20 on the edge of the red zone. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. On first down, here's Stroud. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. It sort of looks like they stopped some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Hand off left side. Pierce shoves him away. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. Stroud to throw it. And that is incomplete. Good work by that Bronco defense, and it leads to a fourth down. Smart move to throw that one away. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. Now the Texans are going to call on the field goal unit. From the left hash, this from 37. And his kick is right there. It's good, and that'll get the deficit down to 15. So that may be not exactly what they were hoping for, but it does get them back within a couple of scores. And at this point in the third quarter, you don't have much margin for error, and that means you can't have drives that end with nothing. Whether it's a punt, a turnover, a turnover on downs, those have to go away. You have to end with a kick, either a field goal or an extra point after a touchdown. Is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Denver Broncos back out there. Former Tar Heel Javante Williams. We shine the spotlight on him. 
Five carries on the previous series, and the fifth one, the one-yard punch into the end zone. Yeah, he showed the muscle, didn't he? He showed <laughs> that, getting into the end zone. You know what I think he'd like on this next series? Another one? Another five or more carries like that. Continue to chew things up, but I bet he'd like a nice long run into the end zone to show off of the rest of his talents. Yeah, I like that. I also like, by the way, when you're demonstrating things, like you were saying, he showed off showed the, the muscle. muscle. You're actually up here flexing. I was flexing. I'm just glad that people can't see that there's not much flex there. Oh, come on. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. Now Wilson on first down. Throw right side is going to be caught by Judy. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. The time called here because a member of the Texans is in some discomfort. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. So a first and ten now in Houston territory at the 49-yard line. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Williams. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Chewing up big yardage, another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Would you say this offense is locked in right now? They're having no trouble on this drive. What, is it three plays, three first downs? Yeah, you talk about on the march. They keep this up, they'll get to that end zone real fast. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. He had to fight that time. Ran through one tackle, but ultimately he's only going to get back to the line of scrimmage. He's having a big game running the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. And movement by one of the Broncos up front, and in comes the flag. Oh, moving from his tight end spot there. Do you think that perhaps the play call was for him? And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Now it's Wilson. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. A partner guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. That's going to be caught by Judy. There's the stiff arm, and they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now it's Wilson. And incomplete. That's a big force in completion there to bring up third and long. And this defense can still salvage a little momentum by forcing them to kick a field goal. Because just a few plays ago, it looked like they were headed towards the end zone. This offense was on the move. Now two straight in completions have them looking at third and ten. Now Wilson. I had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way down field, but once they got their backs to the goal line, 
They really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. The kick by Lutz is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So after five touchdowns offensively, hey, maybe it's time to get the kicker a little work, and he's able to connect there. I love that empathetic side of you. You're worried about him getting some action, getting to be a part of the game. Well, he got in and got it done. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line, so bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision, loses him about four yards. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. First and 10, it's Pierce. And he's got Rome. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. All told, it's an even 30 and a first down. I know that play went to the left side, and that's what it was designed to do, an outside handoff there. But how about the whole offensive line being involved? Seal the left side where the play was going, what they call play side. But how about on the back side? Just taking care of business to make sure no one can get there and disrupt it. Is the biggest key the left tackle? Without a doubt. Control that edge. Get out there. You want that left tackle. If you bring your tight end over there, Either way, control the edge of the line of scrimmage. You got a chance to rumble. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. And Stroud now to throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Woods. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 26. The defense surrenders a 13-yard pass play there on third and one. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. The throwing again is Stroud. Over the middle, complete. That's Woods. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They run here with Singletary. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. A loss of two there, second down. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. Stroud. Oh, this is going to be caught along the sidelines. Probably shouldn't have been caught. He's going to lose yardage there. This will wind up a loss on the play. And this brings up a third and goal. I think it's safe to say that that was not his primary target when the ball was snapped. And then he led him too close to the sideline. And he ended up with a loss on the play. Yeah, great toe tap. 
but you lose yardage, so you wish he didn't even have the toe tap. Wish he would have been out of bounds. Yeah, catch it. Just make sure you're out. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Baron Browning, he's the culprit, causes a loss of five, and it brings up fourth down. Well, this has been a pretty sizable drive. They've had some success. Finally, the defensive coordinator found some success of his own. I think he just simply said enough of that. Okay, they've moved the ball well. We need to force the issue from our end, and that's exactly what he did. And his kick is indeed good, and that'll get the deficit down to 15. So his third field goal of the ball game brings him a bit closer, but there's no question. They need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And sevens, and probably even eights. You know, as a kicker, you just head out when you're called upon, so he's done his job. It's the rest of the offense that needs to get it in gear. They want to close this gap. is the Texans kick team as they'll send this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee and they'll start at the 25. The Broncos are about set to go on offense. This is sort of what you would call a put away drive. Is they, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Now Wilson on the throw led him too much that time. It's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Second and 10. Thanks for tagging along with us here from Houston, Texas. To throw is Wilson. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They forced incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and 10. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. From the shotgun, Wilson. Dancing to his left. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. He certainly had plenty of success running the ball. And right now, I'm getting the sense that he's looking to take off and run every time he steps back to throw it. But they did a nice job there collapsing on him and holding him to a short game. Here's Riley Dixon now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Fair catch called for in May, but now we'll have to see about the penalty. Trailing here in the second half, went for the aggressive play, got a little too aggressive. You've got to know when to pull up, or if you're going to go for it, how to take your body across a punter's body and not into him. Not a good play at all. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. A short one to the tight end, Troutman. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. 
The offense on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. This is third and seven. Throwing is Wilson. Screen play set up for Williams. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide, and these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. Play action. It's Wilson. A quick throw there is incomplete. Well, that's a defensive coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. They go back to the ground with Williams. And an excellent job of finding the opening as he's got this now all the way down to the 22. That good for 19 and a first down. I think there's a fatigue factor that's kicking in defensively. You know the will is still strong, but I think the offense is starting to bend it just a little bit, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. It's looked that way. We'll see if they can continue this already strong drive. Off the play fake, here's Wilson. This will be caught, Judy. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. That is now 19-yard gains on back-to-back -back plays. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because, to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. Williams is into the end zone for a Bronco touchdown. And that right there is a definition of a statement drive. You're in the fourth quarter, trying to get to the finish line, and here, they were able to hold the ball for a long time and move it down the field. And how about them finishing it off with the touchdown run? Winning football 101, check that box. Lutz to try to add the PAT. And the lead opens up now to 22 points. A 10-play drive that time. And it was capped off by a Javante Williams touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And able to get this out to the 25. And now out comes Houston. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, it's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. But at this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Play action. Stroud now. This is caught. It's Woods. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, 
a loss is a loss and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or boy something that feels a little bit cheap but if they trim that lead down to just two scores that's still a benefit to this squad nice rhythm throw there on first down he located his tight end made a nice easy pitch and catch hoping he can break a tackle or two wasn't able to do that there but still good yardage Here's Stroud. He's got Brown on the out route complete. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 36. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Stroud out of the gun here. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Just a gain of a couple there at its second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. Got to get to the 26 for a first. This is third down. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. Five yards on the screen, but that'll take us to fourth down. Boy, that one was well read defensively. And this is all about diagnosis as a safety and being decisive because he saw it setting up in front of him, able to knife through there and make the play. They'll try and run for it. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he's short of the line to gain. The Texans tried it, but they come up empty here on fourth. And the Broncos will take over on downs. Well, they knew who to turn to on fourth down. Their horse, they needed the short yardage. He just couldn't get it. And that's the surprise because normally that's bread and butter for them, right? Hand it to the big guy, let him go, pick up the first down. Didn't get it there. All credit to the defense. Usually, even if they know he's coming, he can't be stopped. And they got it done on that play. So first and 10 here for Wilson and the Broncos at their own 26. He'll hand this to Williams to start things out. And that to the 30. It'll be second down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. And this offense on third down today, they've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and four. Now Wilson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Broncos first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. And it's slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. And we're at the 41, second and nine. And they'll bring Judy in motion right. And he'll get it here on the jet sweep. And this is not going to work as planned. He's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. 
That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. And this won't be enough. A good secure tackle, and they stop him a few yards shy at the 46. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry, and they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. Here's Riley Dixon now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. The Texans getting set here to take over again on offense. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. Stroud now on first and ten. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Noah Brown, the Ohio State man, the intended receiver. But it's going to be second down. Stroud working out of the gun. And he'll get this underneath to Singletary. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Pass taken in by his big tight end. A huge play there for Houston. 51 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. Play action. Here's Stroud. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Stroud looking to throw. Short throw into the hands of Jordan and brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. First target, first catch, and a first down. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should. On all the Look at this time for ones, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And the Broncos will take over here at their own 12-yard line. The rookie was trying to push it downfield, but the safety bit him. And he'll learn that you have to hold the safety. And you do that with your head movement, your eyes, sometimes your shoulders. Hold the safety so that you can get back to the throw that you really want to make. He got so excited thinking his guy was open that he made it easy for the defensive back to go get the football. And the focus shifts back to Jerry Judy and his Bronco teammates. They have to like what they've gotten from him in this game. Think about the accumulation of catches. Eight. The yards per catch now, because you're getting more than a first down every time he's touching the ball. This is the kind of game you want when you're able to throw it out wide. Absolutely. Over 100 yards, has the eight catches. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. The defense thought they had that play covered, but it still got driven backward by those blockers. Those types of plays are a key part of any team's offensive game plan. It all starts up front in the trenches. Second and six. Go, 
They run it again with Williams. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. They go play action with Wilson. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. A running play on first down, and it turns into a fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he'll push forward for a couple to the 34. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. On third down, Wilson. That is caught, and he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and ten. They'll try and run down some clock with Williams. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. Now second and nine. Up the middle, it's Williams. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. They're in a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down at eight. Here's Wilson. He's got his target. That's complete. Oh, some strong running. And all the way home for a Broncos score. Cortland Sutton, 49 yards. And the Broncos have opened up a four-touchdown lead here in the fourth. But not much defensive resistance on that drive. And really, Charles, the way this offense has been humming, they haven't faced much defensive resistance the entire game. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that one team, their defense did not wake up and make it to the stadium for this one. There may be some major changes on that side of the ball when we see them the next time out. Lutz with the extra point, And that'll push the lead up to 29 now. So that drive consumes nine plays, all told. And Cortland Sutton able to finish things off with the touchdown reception. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. 
Well, CD, it's all window dressing at this point. I mean, the best they can do is end the game with a nice drive to maybe build some momentum to move forward into their next contest. Yeah, and with how lopsided this game has been, even one score might not do a lot of cosmetic good on the scoreboard, partner, because it's just about looking forward at this point. Get a touchdown here, give yourself some positive momentum and reps to focus on when you get back to practice in the next couple of days. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Throw right side, taken in by Collins. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now a second and two. Stroud to throw it. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Nico Collins, the intended receiver, and it's third down and two. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Stroud now on third and two. And incomplete on the deep ball. Looks like they're going to keep throwing to the bitter end. This one's long since over, but give them credit. They're going to go down fighting. That one, incomplete. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. They'll try and run for it. And I don't think he got there. He did not. They stop him a yard shy. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Broncos are going to get the football back in great field position. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. Denver's offense now set to go. Well, they don't need to score here, that's for sure. They could just kneel it. They've got the huge lead late fourth quarter, but well, we'll see how they're feeling, Charles. Yeah, we all know people out there who like to use every second of the clock, no matter what the score. And we know they don't need the points. They've scored an abundance already. Let's find out how they want to finish this ball game. So first and 10 now from the 30. On the counter, here's Williams. To about the 26 here. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. So this one will wind up a Denver victory, and it was a game where they were off and running in the first quarter, Charles, and never looked back. You know, partner, after a while, we always say the same thing, don't we? They set the tone early, right? They started fast. So I asked a few of my horse racing friends, do you have a term for me that we can use to cover that? And they said, yeah. When a horse breaks out like that, you say he caught a flyer out of the gate. And that's exactly what this team did today. I mean, they jumped out there, jumped on them, and were never headed. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. So long from Houston.